My name is Robbie Westerman, orthopedic surgeon and team physician at the University of Iowa. We're going to be talking about how to avoid some trouble uh, during hip access. Um, we know that well-performed hip arthroscopy has tremendous potential to help patients in terms of high patient satisfaction and high rates of uh, return to sport. It also outperforms physical therapy in several large uh, multi-center randomized controlled trials uh, with uh, level one evidence. We also know that untreated uh, FAI of the hip can lead to hip replacement surgery and osteoarthritis. Um, this has been demonstrated on several um, long-term follow-up studies. Um, this is a 20-year follow-up study uh, looking at alpha angles and hip impingement um, in patients uh, in a nested cohort within the uh, NIH uh, system in, in uh, London. Uh, and they found that this AP deformity on the um, uh, x-ray is correlated with uh, having hip replacement 20 years down the road. So we do know that well-performed hip arthroscopy has potential to help people out and also potentially um, delay or mitigate the risk of osteoarthritis. What we don't talk about is the elephant in the room is that arthroscopic surgery is not benign. Um, you know, iatrogenic cartilage injuries happen during arthroscopy and nobody talks about it. If you ask the literature, there's maybe an 8% complication rate with articular cartilage damage during scopes uh, of the hip and knee. But, you know, do we even know, you know, what those rates truly are? And what is the incentive to honestly report uh, data on, on this? So we did a study uh, uh, a year ago that looked at the incidence and severity of iatrogenic cartilage injuries during hip and knee scopes. And um, we also sought to look at the uh, uh, cartilage effects on a cellular level. We used uh, surgeon published videos on view medi and arthroscopy techniques. Um, we thought these would be a, a demonstration of the lowest rates of iatrogenic cartilage damage because surgeons chose to publish these, uh, these videos. We looked at these online techniques uh, for hip and meniscus root uh, problems and we identified um, cases like this of iatrogenic cartilage injury and classified them as low, um, intermediate, and high grade uh, injuries with uh, exposed subchondral bone. So you have you know, three classifications. We used um, two different reviewers. And we also wanted to study what the consequences of, of this insult was. And so we took bovine uh, cartilage explants and we used a trocar to recreate low, intermediate, and high grade injuries across articular cartilage. And then we looked at the cellular death with a confocal microscope. What we found was that articular cartilage damage was present in 75% of all surgeon published videos. So in 99 out of 132 videos, there was articular cartilage damage uh, present with similar rates uh, in knee and hip arthroscopy. Um, of the 94 hip arthroscopy videos analyzed, the rate was 77% with 57% minor. 36% um, uh, intermediate and 7% major iatrogenic cartilage injuries. Uh, as you can see here by, uh, with a few examples. The results of the uh, uh, validation of the study with the bovine explant was that all forces resulted in cell death um, with a uh, linear relationship between the amount of force and the amount of cells that had died during this uh, simulated cartilage injury. As you can see here, the red cells uh, denote damaged or dead cartilage cells after a simulated iatrogenic scrape. And this uh, was similar in load-bearing and non-load-bearing uh, uh, cells within the, within the explants. It did not seem to propagate much luckily, so the cell death is likely just uh, localized. So in conclusion, we found that iatrogenic cartilage dam damage occurs in more than 70% of surgeon published videos, and this may be a low estimate because we don't know if surgeons are, are uh, reporting um, these at an adequate uh, rate. Uh, furthermore, the surgeons have the ability to edit these videos and they choose which videos to put online. So th this, this may be a problem um, of even greater magnitude than, than the study uh, demonstrated. Uh, chondrocyte death occurs within the zone of injury but does not necessarily uh, spread. And you know, since I've published the study, um, my buddy Josh Harris says, he cannot unsee this, so he uh, sent me this, uh, these pictures from a, an ICL um, uh, where a surgeon was demonstrating a, a technique and you, know, you, you basically can't see these iatrogenic cartilage damage injuries uh, w once they've been pointed out to you. So this was published uh, last year in arthroscopy and we got good um, editorial recognition um, and the editorial board for Arthroscopy Journal um, you know, called us to action and they said arthroscopic surgeons need to create techniques and instruments to uh, diminish uh, iatrogenesis imperfecta. So there's a problem here and we need to find ways to come up with tools 
uh, techniques and training that can lower or mitigate these risks um, of, of cartilage damage during, during hip and knee surgery. So, so what can we do about this? So you know, accessing the hip is sort of one big uh, um, step in terms of uh, you know, hip arthroscopy learning curves and you should try to access the hip safely and we'll give a, go over a few pointers here. So you want a 10 to 12 millimeters of traction. You don't want too much or too little because uh, too little you'll, you're risking a cartilage damage and too much you're risking nerve damage. So in order to get um, the hip distracted, I like to use an air arthrogram using a postless technique and we inject air into the anterolateral uh, head neck junction using a, a spinal needle. Uh, it's used, uh, we use fluoroscopy to localize it. Once we uh, have adequate placement beneath the capsule, right on top of a uh, bone, we inject uh, air into this and you'll see the hip uh, pop out of the socket here in about uh, five seconds with injection of about 20 cc's of air. Hip will kind of jolt right um, here. And you can see the distraction in the uh, fluoroscopic uh, intensifier behind us. We then place our anterolateral portal, and you know there's several different uh, options you can use for for using uh, access needles to the hip. But if you're using a standard access needle with a bevel, we like to bevel it um, uh, like this towards the head neck junction first to dig into the capsule. Then we like to flip the bevel once we've penetrated the capsule in order to smoothly glide across the, uh, the head neck cartilage without uh, digging into the cartilage. We then you know, insert your anterolateral portal using standard techniques. There are other devices that can uh, also protect against articular cartilage damage during hip access. And this is a, uh, a needle that has a retractable blunt uh, protection device that sort of springs in front of it once the, uh, the needle is uh, uh, inserted through the capsule. So once the needle is inserted through the capsule, the upper left image will show you that uh, this blunt device that sort of protects the sharp edge from uh, butting up against the uh, articular cartilage. Uh, during mid-anterior port mid portal creation, you can see this um, device in action. So in this red triangle in the middle of the screen, you'll see a needle start to come into the hip. Then once it pops through the capsule of the hip right here, you'll see the blunt end protecting you from any uh, articular cartilage uh, damage or mitigating the, uh, the risk of at least severe cartilage damage during uh, mid-anterior portal creation. Uh, to start off your hip arthroscopy. Now the next step is to perform an interportal capsulotomy, and I think this is a source of a lot of iatrogenic damage during, uh, during hip arthroscopy. Um, you know, one tool that uh, you can use is a retractable knife where you can actually insert a, a smooth round knife into your hip and then directly visualize it and then only uh, retract it when you know you're in a safe spot. So this will you know, this can cut down on, on uh, full thickness cartilage injuries by inserting a smooth thing into the joint and then retracting it only when needed. Once you retract your, uh, your hook uh, knife, you can use it to create your interportal capsulotomy here. Uh, as you can see, um, being done in a safe manner, you also have a smooth surface being pointed towards your labrum and your uh, femoral head cartilage uh, in order to help uh, mitigate the risk of um, cartilage damage. This is especially useful if you're using this in the setting with a residence fellows or, or training centers. Soft flexible cannulas are also one thing, one tool I use to avoid uh, damage to the hip joint within, uh, uh, within the central compartment uh, arthroscopy. You also want to have good uh, capsulotomies for visualization. So if you're going to do a big pincer resection, you want to make sure you can see well. So perform a big capsulotomy with, uh, with the tools that are safe for you to correct uh, pincer impingement and also a con concomitant uh, head neck uh, offset junction impingement at the same time as uh, arthroscopy. So during the central compartment, um, you can use these uh, portal savers or easy switch uh, cannulas uh, for most of your work and you can insert them into your anterolateral and mid-anterior portal and keep them there throughout the uh, central compartment uh, portion of surgery. So I usually add one centimeter to the length that I measure to allow for swelling throughout the case. Uh, these can be then cut to size and inserted into the uh, hip. This is, uh, you know, it provides a very tight seal on the, on the hip, so these cannulas typically don't move too much and you can exchange instruments without worrying about losing your, um, uh, your position. Uh, this is a similar uh, technique for measuring and inserting the ones for the mid-anterior portal. And, you know, these soft cannulas uh, are not going to abrade or uh, damage the articular cartilage as much as a rigid uh, cannula would in the system. So, and you can also use them anything between 12 and 3 o'clock that you can safely go back and forth um, with your uh, camera through these portals and, you know, access most of the central compartment with, with, most of the central compartment with these without risk of uh, iatrogenic damage. So if you're encountered with a, a standard, you know, 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock um, central compartment lesion like this one with a large uh, cam flap, 
um, and, a, and a labral detachment from, uh, from this anterior acetabular rim. Uh, these soft cannulas were inserted into both uh, portals in order to um, uh, perform a, a four anchor uh, labral repair um, uh, in a safe manner without damaging the articular surface. Uh, one other thing I found useful within this uh, system is a curved knot pusher. So in order to get the knots uh, firmly behind the uh, articular uh, cartilage, so you're not going to have a knot, you know, a knot abrading on your femoral head cartilage, uh, the, the uh, combat makes a curved uh, knot pusher that I found very useful to deliver the knot safely behind the uh, labrum. Um, so you're not going to have a knot that slips into the joint and abrades up against the femoral head cartilage during um, uh, arthroscopy. Uh, these cannulas can be uh, also used for very advanced central compartment diseases. So this is a failed uh, hip arthroscopy uh, performed at an outside institution that saw me about a year um, after uh, surgery doing very poorly. This is a, a, a six centimeter allograft uh, label reconstruction done to, to recreate the um, uh, suction seal within the hip. And this was uh, all done through these uh, soft cannulas uh, inserted in anterolateral mid anterior portals throughout, uh, throughout the case. Um, so in conclusion, iatrogenic uh, cartilage damage uh, is common during hip arthroscopy, but nobody talks about it. It results in superficial cell death and the long-term consequences of uh, these scrapes on the articular cartilage are unknown. Um, joint access is a very high risk time for uh, hip arthroscopy uh, articular cartilage damage, and you should use all the tools you have available to, to help mitigate risks of, um, of damage during surgery. These can be retractable or hook knives, um, protection needles, uh, soft cannulas and, and obviously adequate distraction and, and sound uh, surgical technique. So I'd just like to thank uh, ConMed for the uh, um, ability to, to uh, do this talk and also for uh, creating instruments that help um, uh, keep patients uh, safe. So I'd like to open up for any questions.